Hey, welcome to our course on and just chats about finance and especially financial integrity based upon uh, the book written by myself and Dr. Steve Mills, my partner in ministry, uh, our international vice president for Vision International University. And we're going to be talking about finance uh, somewhat reluctantly, reluctantly in that I hear complaints, you know, not all the time because, you know, 24 hours a day I'm doing other things, but, uh, but frequently from both Christian people and certainly from people outside of the body of Christ who complain about church and giving and that the, 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 we're always asking for money. Now we know that money is an important thing, <laughs> especially nowadays with inflation and all that, our money's becoming worth less and less and we tend to need more and more. But, um, but really money is an important topic in scripture. Uh, you know, one of the th scriptures I've thought about often is how uh, Jesus was sitting outside of the treasury and watching people give. And I hear a lot with pastors and leaders, you know, I don't want to know what my people give. But Jesus did say, you know, where your treasure is, there is your heart. And so if you don't really know how someone is managing their life, their time, their talent, their treasure, their overall stewardship, but again, especially their finances, you probably don't fully know the condition of a person's heart. And so I think our heart needs to be pure as leaders. We, we're not interested in how much someone makes or how much they're giving, except as it relates to the condition of their heart. So, I mean, I've heard lots, as I said, complaints about giving. And, and it is true for many, especially the more independent and charismatic churches, it is pretty much true that every Sunday there is a mini message on giving. Now, again, it is an important topic in Scripture. It's one of the number one things talked about in Scripture is money and the management or the mismanagement of money, the importance of working hard for your money, etc. And being a generous giver is certainly a big part. But still, it is quite true that most local congregations, especially of the more charismatic Pentecostal flavor, Every Sunday, you've got a mini message on giving. We don't do a mini message on prayer or the study of the word or any other pertinent topic, but we do on money. And that maybe is something that we should consider, but I think one of the reasons why there's so much emphasis on giving, especially a mini message every week, is because it's... <laughs> We're hoping that people will actually get the message and begin to give. Now, I was taught as a kid growing up that, you know, the tithe belonged to God. I just was taught that. I was a young Christian, only 12 years of age. And so beginning at 12, I would give a tithe. I was told that missionaries needed additional support, so I gave money for missions. And so I've always given more than just 10%. And it's a legitimate 10%, not a, a tip of God. I mean, it's, it's really, I, I believe in that. I believe in giving. But I, I don't, I'm not one that's really harps on you better give or you're going to come under a curse. Because Christ became a curse for us. We're not cursed. But I believe God wants us to experience the true blessing of freedom that we can have as we become true, generous givers. The fact is, Churches are by and large undersupported. Pastors by and large are undersupported. Missionaries are clearly undersupported, let alone the rest of the fivefold ministry gifts that oftentimes have to use other means to fund the work that they do, whether from business or other donations or hawking material or whatever the, the case may be. And so I want to focus our time now in this course and over the next few sessions on principles of finance, but especially on financial integrity. 
You know, John wrote in 3 John verse 2, he said, I would, beloved, that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. I mean, we start the introduction of our book. Again, the book we're talking about is Financial Integrity. You can get it through booksbyvision.org. Uh, it's, of course, a part of your course if you're taking this for credit through Vision International University, vision.edu. But, uh, you know, John's prayer was that we prosper. Now, we know that prosperity, that word means to have everything that you need for your journey. Let me just make a couple of comments. I mean, I've, I've worked with a lot of different ministries, been around for a while. I was listening to one fairly well-known minister who made statements like this. God told me that I was to do this, that, or the other area of ministry. And of course, it takes money to be able to do that. And so any means by which we get the money, including embellishing our, our uh, fundraising letters, maybe not telling the whole story about things, well, you know, it's still okay because that's how we get the money. And once we have the money, we can do the ministry and thus we're fulfilling the will of God. That's called really delusional thinking. Circular thinking, it sounds logical, but it's really not. It's really not healthy. It's not biblical. I mean, God wants us to prosper, to have all that we need for our journey. But he doesn't want us to lie or steal or manipulate people in order to get the money so that we can do what God's called us to do. I mean, I, I know various ministries, they spend most of their time raising enough money so they can continue to do what they're doing and continue to raise more money. I mean, look, God knows what we need, of course. And he, he is a, he's a great father. But you know, the, the number one process, if you will, that we, we, we have to recognize to, that produces wealth in people's lives is a four-letter word. It's called work. And rarely do we see very wealthy people in their 20s and 30s or 40s unless they inherited it. It's primarily folks that have worked steadily, they've saved diligently, they've invested wisely, and especially, they've been faithful in their giving into the kingdom of God. And over time, 30, 40, maybe 50 years, suddenly, all of a sudden, they are now in the upper middle class or even wealthy. Well, again, you hear what I mean by the suddenly. God wants us to prosper, but he, he considers the whole journey, not just this week, this month, he certainly doesn't want us to live paycheck to paycheck or month to month alone. He wants us to prosper and, of course, to be in health. And so part of being in health, John says, even as your soul prospers, your mind, your will, your emotions, your thinking, your consciousness needs to line up, of course, with what the Word of God says. In other words, God wants us to to be generous givers, not foolish or stupid givers, We're t we'll talk about that, but generous givers, knowing that you truly cannot outgive God, that we are investing in God's kingdom, and yes, in the process, he blesses us, he prospers us. And I believe with all of my heart, he would like for all of us to be prosperous enough that we fulfill the journey that God wants us to fulfill. And so over the next few weeks, uh, next few sessions, we're going to be talking about, again, financial integrity. Again, I believe God wants us to prosper, to be in health, even as our soul prospers. Let me just read uh, one more scripture here, because if you'll notice, God's blessings are, are, I mean, may not be flowing for you as much as you'd like, but his plan is to bless us. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, it says, Then to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat from it. 
Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles, and it shall grow for you, and you will eat the plants of the field, etc., etc. Now, some people read that and say, man, the, the man was cursed. No, the, the ground was cursed. It, work is necessary. We have to work hard. You, you don't get ahead unless you're willing to work. And for most of us, we've got to have a side hustle or two. Those are all real principles. But you know, God actually always provided a way for us to be able to get what we need and also to bless his kingdom and see his people touched and blessed uh, in their families in every aspect of life. And so we're going to be talking about that in the next uh, few sessions. And I look forward to sharing these principles with you on financial integrity.